Tuesday night edition of the Anaheim Calling Podcast. We are here to discuss the draft lottery results. Jake can finally go to bed at night peacefully knowing exactly what the draft order will be. No, the Ducks did not get into the lottery. Instead, they finished with the ninth overall pick, which is still a pretty good spot to be in. As you can hear, he's audibly sighing into the mic. Now, just to recap the, t- the teams that did get into the lottery. Uh, so the New Jersey Devils will be selecting first overall. The New York Rangers will be going second overall. And the Chicago Blackhawks will be going third. So, I mean, as far as TV ratings go, I would say that these uh, lottery results are pretty friendly. Um, two, the top two picks go to the greater New York metro area. Uh, and then you yep. have Chicago with the number three pick. So oh. I don't know. what. It, let, we'll get into the Ducks quickly here, but just some of your overall impressions of the, the draft lottery. When I saw Chicago win, I was just like, why? Why? <laughs> why? I mean, they were pretty bad. They were right down there with the Ducks. They finished 12th. They yeah, are, I mean, that's, or, that's not sorry. good. What what would this have been? They finished, uh, where was it? 84 points. They were only six points out of the playoffs. They had four more points than the Ducks. Well, they Um, were six points out of the playoffs in the West. Let's be very clear about what that means. Fair point. Fair point, says Mr. uh, Yes. I mean, mean, they would have been, uh, let's see here, 12 points out. Yeah. Actually, 14 points out in the East. So, anyway. Yeah. So. Neither here nor there. Regardless, um I think the funniest thing to come out of this is the fact that uh, Taylor Hall has now been on a team that has won the draft lottery five times, five times, five times. Mm -hmm. And so you think about it. He was on the uh, he was on the Oilers and that's excluding the time that he actually that the Oilers won the draft to draft him. But he was on the Oilers when they got Nugent Hopkins, Yakupov, McDavid. Then he's been on. He was on the Devils when they won uh, the Heischer draft, and now he's on the Devils again. And yeah. there he won the Jack Hughes Derby. I mean, I think Chicago getting that pick is frustrating because they're Chicago. Yeah. But I think the teams that are probably the most frustrated are teams like Detroit, L.A., yeah. um, Buffalo, because, well, I mean, they, they were epically bad. And, you know, although um, – you know, L.A. got the fifth pick, Detroit got the sixth pick, and Buffalo got seventh. I mean, for Chicago to jump into the lottery, out of because Chicago is basically part of that group, right? Chicago, Minnesota, Philly, Vancouver, yeah. Anaheim, Edmonton, that were all kind of well, equally bad. You know, I mean, there Chicago, was, but, Chicago was in the playoff mix for a while. They were up there with, like, Colorado. They were on par with Colorado right, so for a while. so was Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, the, these... But the thing is, between all of those teams that I just mentioned, there was a four a four point gap. Yeah, and if you throw okay. in Edmonton and, and the Rangers, that's a six point gap. So I mean, they're all just kind of this this like just molass yeah. of of just mediocre teams. So all this to say that I think the most disappointed fan bases today, if you're just looking at it systematically, are is going to be uh, you know the teams that finished way at the bottom. Yeah. But I think for the Ducks, and now I guess we can kind of transition over well, re- re- into the... Really quickly, yes. I did want to make mention, I have a buddy of mine who's a Red Wings fan, uh, uh, texted me, feeling? super pissed off. He's like, we couldn't win enough or lose enough to get into yeah. the lottery because they were sandwiched by the Rangers and Devils. So had they moved up or down, they would have been into the lottery. I mean, how do you think I feel, man? Canadians didn't get into the lottery. One percent, one percent odds. How, how nervous were you when they pulled out the number fifteen card? I honest, well, I wasn't watching on TV, oh. but I was. I really was rooting for it. But I mean, unreal though that the Canadians finished fourteenth in the league. They finished ahead of Dallas, Vegas, and Colorado in the in the league standings and didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna be bitter about that for a while. One, um, but let's let let's talk about the Ducks' perspective here because that's well, what the people want. I do want to make say? I do want to make mention so. This is the first draft lottery, I think, in a long, long time that I've watched with any rooting interest. Mm-hmm. Holy crap, is it stressful. It's so, <laughs> Well, they make it stressful. Well, and it's the fact of put it, pulling over the numbers. And when once I saw that it was Minnesota at 12, I was like, crap. So And everyone knows what that means, that Chicago jumped up. And it's like, well, crap, okay. All right, so 
12 is Minnesota. All right, 11. Please be Philadelphia. All right, it's Philadelphia. 10. Okay, good. It's Vancouver. 9. Please don't be the Ducks. Please don't don't be the Ducks. Please be Edmonton. It's the Ducks. Crap. Well, see, that's what that that's why I you know, watching on TV is kind of worthless because the insiders are just tweeting everything out before it happens on TV. Yeah. I, w- I was just refreshing my phone like I, as I was doing grocery shopping. And uh, I look, I looked like an idiot standing by the asparagus, just staring at my phone. Oh, I was in the gym the- as this was going on. Me and a buddy were watching it in watching the draft lottery happen in the gym. And we were like, just standing there staring like by a bench press. Yeah. I'm sure you were one of ma- you were two of many people watching oh, the dra- draft lottery. All the, the people gym. in the gym were uh, watching the draft lottery big on the yeah. screens. I mean, it is stressful because you know, you, you're so, you know, for a lot of these teams, it can be such a boost. Um, But anyway, so for the Ducks, though, I think that what's frustrating about this is that they get the ninth pick, which, again, is not at all a bad spot to be in. But, um, I mean, they were just so epically bad for so many, you know, for the stretches where they lost, you know, over 10 games in a row. I think that it just feels odd that they would not, you know, that they would not have a higher pick. But, again, this is what happens when (laughs) – you fire Randy Carlisle and get better. <laughs> yeah. You don't well, finish as low. And again, I think that the we, we had a lot of debates about this in season about yeah. how, um, you know, is it worth maybe hurting your draft odds to just have like a, I guess, a more palpable, a more, sorry, not palpable, more palatable end to the season. And I, I think that the trade off, I think the Ducks know now more what they have in these young guys. And maybe that the the need, the pressing need for any type of fine through the draft feels a little less urgent. You know, I think yeah, that they can yeah. feel a little more confident. I, I think, now, again, I think you'd rather have Jack Hughes than maybe any of the yeah. Ducks youngsters. Well, I mean, and that's no slight to them, but that's the way these things work. So my only frustration with this, and this is probably really my only frustration, is I went into those final two games of the season really, I mean, let's be real. It was better for the Ducks to lose those final two games against the Flames and against the Kings. And especially with the Flames sitting all of their players, if they would have just played their guys, they probably would have won that game. If the Ducks lose those two games, because the way the draft lottery works, for those of you that don't know, essentially each team is assigned a certain amount of random uh, number combinations of four different numbers. And the way it works is they assign them to number uh, the worst team. They get their percentage of it. Then it goes so on and so forth. So if the Ducks would have lost those two games, they would have been in the sixth spot in new in the ranger spot and gotten those random gen, randomly generated generated combinations so right but then, but that's that's it, no i mean let, let's not pretend that that's not how this works though i mean yes they would have been in the ranger spot but who's to say that the ranger spot would have been the one you know if you were to do this over no but my point is i that mean i get it, why it's frustrating in, for you. in hindsight you can look at it and say well hey, yeah but that's that, complete hindsight well that that sixth pick one and yes, it's like those two losses are different. If you were to do it over again, I mean, those two maybe losses. the six pick wouldn't have won. I agree, Jake. I understand you're bitter. One hundred percent bitter. One hundred percent bitter. But now you're now you're now you're taking too many logical leaps here. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna allow you. You're not to be gonna this stand better. for it. You're putting your foot I mean, down. No, but I, I. I get it. I mean, you know, as a fan, having to endure a season like this, you want the maximum reward. Yeah. You, you want it to. You want it to be the most okay and. I mean, again, that kind of speaks to to this league is that, you know, we talk a lot about parity and about how anyone can win it, but there's a lot of bad teams. There are a lot of teams that are just kind of going nowhere. I mean, I look at Minnesota. I look at Philly. I look at Edmonton. I mean, you know, even Buffalo, you know, Arizona's the, yes, they're the the darlings of the NHL. A lot of people that watch the NHL, but they haven't made it. And so there's just a lot of rudderless ships, Detroit. Um, there's a lot of teams that yeah. are actively tr- not trying to win. Yeah. You know, I mean, we talk about tanking teams like Detroit, um, teams like Buff, not Buffalo, I should say, but the Rangers, Vancouver, um, they were down at the bottom of the standings on purpose. You know, I mean, they yeah. were not trying to be good well, this season. Like the, I think the Kings, I mean, for all Ducks fans, if you want to have the biggest positive from tonight, it's the fact that the Kings uh, dropped to fifth. I mean, that's well, probably yeah. the biggest positive there. I mean, for... I think Kings fans should be the most upset because they, you know, they endured this hellacious season. I mean, this, 
I can't even imagine being a Kings fan because of how frustrating that team was all year, that coaching staff. Yeah. And so to not have a top three pick to show for it, that's brutal. Yeah. Um, but right. anyway, l- l- let's get into the Ducks perspective as we've been trying to do here the last couple of minutes. So they finished ninth. Um, and if you look at it, you know, some of the players that are going to be, you know, available at that slot, I mean, you know, I mean, are Jack, Hughes, Jack Hughes and Capo Caco could slip. I mean, New Jersey and New York might pass on them, right? Right? <laughs> right? Well, it, there is a question of will New Jersey take Caco number one? Yeah. I I wouldn't think too hard about that one take if Jack, I were them. Take Jack Hughes. Yeah, take Jack Hughes. Um, but so for, for, for Anaheim, you know, if you look at the breakdown of this uh, from The Athletic, they have in their mock draft, they have Peyton Krebs going number nine to Anaheim. And he's a center, you know, not a big center plays out of the WHL and you know it looks like based on the description from Corey Promen who's kind of the resident uh draft expert at the athletic he does he does good work in terms of tracking so many different players and it seems like he's kind of almost in the in the Sam Steele vein you know obviously with much higher upside where he can kind of do everything you know he's got good hockey sense plays with pace um, and so, I mean, it seems like a good ad, you know, there's other guys in that range that all seem like they're plug and play that, you know, a lot of centers in that range. Yeah. So, I mean, I, think, I don't know. I think, I, that, I think, I think the think, ducks are going to get a good player here. I think the names to really kind of keep an eye on, I think Peyton Krebs, he's an interesting name, um, having kind of looked at it and done a little bit of research this afternoon, but he's on a really bad Kootenai ice team and kind of is elevating the players around him. And so it could be a situation where, Maybe he becomes the steal of the draft because his team's just bad. So maybe if he's put in a better situation, his skill level shines more. And when he's with better players around him, I mean, yes, you want your superstar to rise up to the cream of the crop. But I mean, maybe he's not a superstar, but maybe and but putting him with better players will make him better. And so maybe that makes him a steal of the draft. But I mean, you have uh, Trevor Zegras from the U.S. National Development Program. I mean, certain people, I mean, uh, let me see it. Uh, Sam Constantino of Sportsnet has Kirby Doc being at his eighth pick. Uh, Zgras being his seventh pick. He has Matthew Boldy at nine and Peyton Krebs at 10. So 11 is uh, Kaliev, uh, right winger. So I really think the Ducks are probably going to try to focus on getting a center and whoever's available, whether that I think the four names to kind of keep an eye on. Granted, three of them are listed higher than the Ducks pick on Sam Constantino's list, but would be Alex Turcott, Trevor Zegras, uh, Kirby Doc, and Peyton Krebs. I think those are possibly the names to keep an eye on. Yeah, and if you look at the last three drafts, uh, the ninth overall pick last year, Vitaly Kravtsov for uh, the Rangers, another guy who kind of in this vein of Krebs, I think at the, at the time of the draft, it felt like he got... He didn't slip necessarily in the draft, but that he was kind of one of those uh, high upside guys. And then if you look at uh, the 2017 draft, ninth overall, Michael Rasmussen for the Red Wings, who I think actually was up with the Red Wings this season for for periods of time. Uh, And then going back to 2016, uh, ninth overall, Mikhail Sergachev. So it certainly seems, and then, I mean, I'm going to pull up a few more drafts here. Um, um, but it's it certainly seems like you can get a decent player at that range. One off the board name a little bit here, but it's because he's having such a strong playoffs is Raphael Lavoie uh, for the Halifax Mooseheads. I know I've seen that name and he's just having an absolutely insane playoffs. I don't know if you want to draft a guy, though, because of a playoff run. Yeah, um, I mean, that that seems, you know, at nine, you know, anywhere really in the top 10, you kind of want to take the you want to take guys on pedigree a little bit because usually that's. You know, that that's going to win out. It seems like teams that really gamble in the top 10, I just, I don't know how you necessarily fare. And then in 2015, I'm just going to go over some of the recent uh, ninth picks. 2015, Timo Meyer. Um, that one took a little time to, to come to fruition, but turned out to now, be a really good player. He's now a stud for the San Jose Sharks. Ninth overall in 2014, Nikolai Ehlers, another pretty good player. 2013, Bo Horvat. Uh, 2012, Jacob Truba, 2011, I'm just going down the list here, Dougie Hamilton at ninth overall, and I'll, I'll finish here at, at 2010, uh, ninth overall in the 2010 draft, uh, Mikhail Grandlin. So, you know, there's kind of some misses in there. Not misses, but there's guys who 
you're obviously a little less excited about. But there's yeah. clearly some pretty good players in there, and some mm-hmm. of them took a little time. Um, and just for the heck of it, this pro- this one's probably going to make people shudder. Uh, granted, it's the Senators, but ninth overall in 2009, Jared Cowan. Uh, so Did you watch this? Didn't necessarily work out. Ninth overall would have been Nick. You said Nikolai Ehlers, right, for the Jets? Yeah, uh, that's that would have been. That's one that comes yeah. to mind right away because that was right before Nick Ritchie was taken. Um, one thing I did want to talk about really quickly, uh, cause Bonnie asked it in our Twitch chat, basically asking, do, does Jack Hughes, and I think this kind of applies to all players, do they have to accept, uh, basically who they are drafted from? So basically the way it works is once they're drafted, the team has four years to work out an entry level deal with them. If the team and the player cannot come to an agreement after those four years, then he becomes a free agent to sign an ELC wherever he deems, uh, wherever he would like to go. The thing is, with these high ra- uh, high first round picks, these guys are gonna go to the NHL right away. So he basically has to be on the Devils if he wants to be playing um, in the NHL next year. If that that is, if the Devils do draft him. Yeah, and then uh, by the way, just to kind of lift everyone's spirits, 2007 draft, Logan Couture's ninth overall. So that's, Dude, wait, I mean, he was 2007 draft. Yeah. Why did I think he was? Tw- I thought he was the Fowler draft of 2010. I think he no. broke it. Oh, he broke in the same year Fowler did. That's yeah, what it he, was. He, he had another year in junior and then oof, uh, 2006, James Shepard, although that's kind of injury related. And then ninth overall in 2005, Brian Lee, 2004. I'm just having fun with this. Uh, 2004, Ladislav Smeed, who was okay at points in time. But so Wait, it's that, kind of a mix. That would have been a it's Ducks kind of, pick also. Uh, Linus Slavshby, ninth overall. Yeah, Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Yep. Boom. Jake knows his uh, Ducks draft history. Linus Slavshby be- traded for Chris Pronger. 2003 is Dion Phaneuf at ninth overall. And, I mean, I don't know. It, it's kind of a mixed bag. You know, you can see – you can kind of see the range of outcomes. There's not a whole lot of just total misses in there, but there's a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Bonnie, just to answer that question, because it's kind of a fun one, I recommend you just go on, on YouTube and type in Eric Lindros, Quebec Nordiques. Um, that's Forcing a fun a trade. One. That's an infamous one I mean, where Eric Lindros basically refused to go to Quebec Nordiques for uh, a number of reasons. But that's not the norm. Well, and, then um, there, and then there's the whole debate about which trade was the right trade because both the Flyers and the Rangers had deals yeah. supposedly done and had to go yeah. to arbitration. Yeah, no, there's there's a good there's a good documentary yeah. about it uh, that you can find on YouTube. Yeah. Maybe we'll put that um, somewhere. And then, so we have a question in the Twitch chat uh, from Boom Snap Bam, and I think this goes hand in hand with our next pick. But he's basically asking if we know who the Ducks may be interested in with their later picks from the Blues or Sharks. And so, kind of the yeah. answer to that is no. And the reason for that is we don't really know where that pick is going to end up, and that's kind of the issue with it. Um, the issue with that pick is so right now the ducks have the choice of St. Louis or San Jose. The um, contingency on that pick is St. Louis's draft pick has to be in the twenties or 30 also mind you, but it has to be in the twenties for the ducks to be able to pick it. So it has to be at least the 20th overall pick Mm. as of right now, St. Louis is 20th. The issue is that if any of the teams below St. Louis, so below in the standings, so Columbus, Dallas, Vegas, or Colorado. If any of those teams, because the way that the the draft works is all of the teams that don't make the conference finals get picked 16 through 27 based upon the standings, and then the conference final losers get picked 28 and 29, and the Stanley Cup final teams with the loser of the Stanley Cup final getting 30, 30th and the winner of the cup getting 31. So if any of the teams below St. Louis and Columbus, Dallas, Vegas, or Colorado make it to the conference final, they would jump up to the 28th or 29th or 30th or 31st pick, moving that St. Louis pick into the teens, making it so the Ducks cannot take it. So essentially, Mm. if, for instance, if Vegas makes the conference final St. Louis and St. Louis just loses before the conference final, St. Louis's pick is now 19th. The Ducks do not have the option of taking that anymore. So if it if it goes earlier than the twenties, they don't have it. No. Okay. So basically, the well, ducks then. the ducks want St. Louis to lose in the first Jake, two are, rounds. Are, are, are you sure that you're still picking St. Louis for yeah, the Western I mean, Conference I, Final? Yeah, I still think St. Louis makes the Western Conference Final. That's just my judgment of the situation. 
I don't want them to. Basically, okay. so if St. Louis were to lose in the first or second round and you have Columbus, Dallas, Vegas, and Colorado all lose in the first and second round, the Ducks have the 20th overall pick. Any closing thoughts on the draft here? Because I feel like we're we're starting to have a little playoff playoff chatter. Any closing thoughts from a Ducks perspective, big picture, anything like that? Um, I think it's a little bit disappointing from a big picture perspective, the fact that this was such a bad season and they only ended up with a ninth overall pick. I mean, Grant, it wasn't bad enough. <laughs> yeah, but it, so it's frustrating because it it's – you really, in order to make this season kind of feel worth it, you want it to be in that top five or at least the top six. Right. I mean, th- th- that's the problem with the ninth pick is it's just such a, it re- I mean, I've, I'm, I've now gone all the way back to 1999 while you were talking <laughs> and I'm not going to spout out off all the names, but it's, it's really a mixed bag. I mean, you have, I mean, I, I think that drafting has gotten smarter. I think I would yeah. say in recent years, and, you know, the Ducks do seem to do a good job. You know, they've done a good job with later picks. But it is a little disappointing. And, again, um, you know, you can't really be that disappointed if you were not at all on board with tanking or, yeah. you know, strategically not winning games. Uh, yeah. But, again, I, I think that this is definitely something that's going to help. Uh, Sorry, my windows are banging. It's very, very windy. It's very, very windy. I felt my whole entire apartment shake. Yeah, it's extremely windy, and it's frustrating. Um, Christian J brings up, but they do have two first over or first round picks, and I think I think if that St. Louis pick stays at twenty, they might not. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they they, they may or they may not. I I mean, mean, it really depends. But okay, let me let, let me ask you this. Yeah, if you're if you're the Ducks, do you consider packaging? nine and whatever you have in the twenties, let's say that they, they hold on to the St. Louis pick to move up. I think if you get, can get yourself into that top five top range, five. Yeah. I don't, th- I don't think one or two is going to get moved, but I think if, no. it all depends. I think everything after that is kind of on the, on the board because I think from everything I've read, there's a bit of a drop off from cousins to the rest of the, the league. Mm-hmm. So if, and I'm wondering if Colorado is willing to move that pick. Because yes, four defensemen. Maybe. So because Fowler plus nine and twenty one or do twenty. Do you think that gets it? Do you think? Because to me, I would do it if I was Colorado. Because if I'm Colorado, do I need more forwards? Yes, they do need better depth. But they, they do. do have Kerfoot. They do have Comfer. Um, mm-hmm. They do have some decent pieces up front outside of McKinnon. Now, none of them are going to be that great, but or none of them are going to be top end talent like cousins Mm -hmm. potentially could be, but cousins isn't going to be in the NHL next year. Most likely he's not a game breaker. And that's the thing with Colorado is that I don't think that they're really like, you know, I think they have enough. I mean, you never really have enough, you know, blue chip prospects, but I think they're trying to be good now. I think that you have Nathan McKinnon, you have Gabriel Landeskog, you have Miko Rantanen, I think it's time for them to maximize that. And I think that if you look at their blue line, it's kind of rough. I mean, you look at their their left side, Gerard, Zadorov, and Ian Cole. I mean, I think that if you plug in a Cam Fowler into there, it looks a lot better. And then yeah. if you're the Ducks, you you clear off some cap space. I think you get out you get off that crapshoot ninth pick. And, you know, I mean twentieth pick. I mean, they got Isaac Lundestrom last year, you know, kind of in that range. And he's a prospect that is probably gonna be a, a, a good player, but you're not you're not backing up the truck for. And yeah. so I, I, I think that if Boom. I would consider it if I was Boom Snap Band I, I, mentions I, I, that Kale McCarr should be there next year, but I think that they still outside of Tyson Berry, and granted, this is speaking on a team that we don't follow as much as the Ducks, but mm-hmm. just kind of from my outside perspective, outside of Tyson Berry, they're I mean, they have Eric Johnson. They've got Samuel Gerrard, but it doesn't right. seem like they have kind of that solid blue line there. And so I think that that's uh, right. Yeah. So and, and, and Kale McCarr is a cautionary tale. I mean, they drafted him fourth overall in, in 2017. Doesn't he and look, everyone, everyone is extremely isn't excited everyone about still him. Still really high on him. Uh, it, it's kind of fluctuated a little bit. I mean, it's it's taken just a little time, a little more time. Maybe happens than with you'd like happens with defensemen, though. Yeah, but when you're drafting fourth overall, you kind of would like for that to be a little quicker. 
the point being is that, okay, let's say they have McCarr. Let's say he's great. Wouldn't you rather have Gerard McCarr Fowler as opposed to Gerard McCarr Sidorov slash Cole? True. I mean, I mean, you can still improve. I mean, it, it's not one or the other. Now, for the Ducks, it, I think that it really just comes down to your estimation of Cam Fowler and also what you can get with well, the fourth pick. And if you believe the drop off from three to nine is large, it, what, what, uh, which I do think it is. Again, not having totally spent a lot of time digging into this draft, which I will um, as we approach it, but I, it doesn't seem to me like this massive yeah. drop off. Or yeah. sorry, I mean, it, to me, it seems like after you know one through four or five, it seems like it starts becoming a crapshoot. Um, now, again, the problem with this Foul- is that I don't. I don't do you, think that Blackhawks will draft Pukolzin. <laughs> do you think? Do you think Fowler plus the the twentieth? And also, I do want to make mention. Someone was uh, asking in the Twitch chat how high the San Jose pick can get. If so, if uh, if Vegas, Dallas, and uh, Vegas, Dallas, and Columbus make the conference final, San Jose's pick would jump to twenty two. Columbus ain't making the conference final, so most realistically. I could maybe see a Dallas Vegas conference final if that were, or even uh, Dallas Vegas. Is that possible? Oh yeah, I guess it would be. Or actually, there actually, sorry, there's a whole lot of teams that can make the conference final where San Jose's pick would jump up. Whether Toronto, Pittsburgh, Winnipeg, Carolina, St. Louis, Columbus, Dallas, Vegas, Colorado. If any of the that or that combination of teams make the conference final, so the that pick can get to 21 if all the teams that make the conference final are from below San Jose. Right. Um, so, but, but do you? If, but, but if the you, question is, but do you yeah, think twenty one and Fowler gets you up to three or four? N- no, hell no. <laughs> I mean, unless that team loves Cam Fowler, which I guess is not impossible, especially if you look at Colorado. I think Lindholm and that pick gets it done. I think Lindholm by himself co- gets it done. Uh yeah. I mean, maybe. You know, I think. Yeah, I think if you throw in. That other pick, you probably guarantee it. You know, I think the other team may, think, might ask for I that think you're because over, then they I think, don't have a first round pick. I think anymore. you're overvaluing that that uh, that drop in posi- or your. So you're saying that I w- just Lindholm for the fourth gets it done? Yeah, I think so. If you're Colorado, yeah, right. I mean, if let's say let's say Colorado plays a little hardball and says, okay, well, we want to do it, but then we don't have a pick this year. Do you just throw in the twentieth to get it done? Like, do you, do you well, I think, think about that is, too long? As, as so, Christian J puts it in this in our Twitch chat, and I agree with it. And this is kind of what where I'm angling with it is that Fowler is a sure thing, Cousins isn't. You know what? Fowler is a sure thing, but what's the sure thing? Well, and that, mean, well, and I think Lindholm. Sure well, and I think Lindholm yes. on Lindholm on those lines is in the same yeah. boat. You know yeah. what you got with Lindholm. I think I think Lindholm for the fourth is a lot more in my head is a lot more feasible than Fow- like let's say Fowler for the fourth. Well, I'm Fowler not saying Fowler but alone, but it would say Fowler yeah, yeah. maybe the twentieth. Yeah, I mean, I you know, especially if you look at Colorado and you add in a Hampus Lindholm there, that I mean, that's I kind of a game changer. Yeah, I don't think Lindholm. Line. I don't think Lindholm is getting moved though. I mean. No, but <laughs> I, I just Who don't knows? think it's worth it. I, I don't think it's worth it for the fourth pick. No. As as weird as that sounds, it, I just if you can get into the top two, maybe. Maybe this is all going to sound really silly once uh, one of these guys in the top in the three or four spot becomes a star. Yeah, <laughs> but I just right now it's too much of a leap. But yeah, if you can get into the one and two, then of course. But at that point, you're giving up a whole lot more. Yeah. Uh, than, than Hampus yeah. Lindholm. But I, I, I do think that the Ducks should be thinking that way, at least to some degree, because none of their picks are just, oh my goodness, we have to hang on to this. Yeah. You know, so if they if they have a possibility of moving up, um, I mean, it's very rare that teams give up their pick that high, you know, but I think with Colorado, the reason why I would be targeting them is because A, the Ducks do have things that Colorado lacks, and B, Colorado, I don't, I mean, I don't think they're really building for the future. At least they shouldn't be. They, they, they're probably looking to be good now. Um, anyway, my last thoughts on the draft here. I am not going to lie. When they announced it was Rangers, the Devils, and Blackhawks for the top three, I was hoping rigged. Rangers would go number one. Oh, I thought you were going to say rigged. No, it's not rigged. Uh, but <laughs> it's definitely not rigged. But um, if... Uh, 
I would I would rather see Jack Hughes with the Rangers than the Devils. Just just as an entertainment perspective. It is kind of funny that they're both I mean it's the same thought process of Jack Jack Hughes and Artemi Panarin well, on the same line. It was the thought process of me wanting the Ducks and Kings to get the top two picks. It is gonna be fun having both of them in yeah. that market. Yeah, I mean what do you think the odds are that the the Devils take Kako first? Thirty percent. Twenty five percent. Thirty? 25? Okay, so there's a chance. I think there's a chance. I think there's always a chance, but I think also someone pointed out that um, Ray Shiro was the agent or the advisor for Jack Hughes' dad when he was in college. Oh, geez. There's yeah, a forget it there. then. For, forget everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guarantee now. I mean, it's not, I mean, Jack Hughes is, you know, seems like he's going to be generational. So, yeah. Um, um, we do I have, mean, a, what, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we do have a question in the Twitch chat that I think goes with all of this um, from STFU. Shane said question for later. What do you put the odds on the ducks actually drafting the two picks that we have? I would put them at above 50. I, you know, so if I'm going to be specific, I'm going to say uh, probably 70%. I'd say 80. Yeah. 80. So I think we both agree. It's It's pretty high. I mean, the a bomber is just not a, really an aggressive GM and B. I think that, you know, if because we just kind of discussed it, there's just not a lot of deals that make sense, you know, unless they there's just a player that they just really love. And even then, I mean, teams do that kind of thing. It's like, oh, we just love this player. We're going to move up. And it turns out that guy is not any good or doesn't have that kind of impact. So I don't know. It's, it's going to be a fun draft. Again, I don't have a horse in the race. The Canadians are the 15th pick. By the way, Eric Carlson was a 15th pick. Just want to put that yeah. out there. <laughs> um but i it was a fun it was a fun lottery i'm yeah i i kind of like the teams that you know as i know a lot of people are going to hate this but i kind of like the teams that got one two three you know if it had been like edmonton buffalo you know just these teams that we've already seen in the past get it even like i just don't care to see jack hughes on the kings uh you yeah. know or i don't i did Philly. not want to i mean you were getting terrified today that he was going to end up on the oilers <laughs> yes, because I was running the draft simulation. I kept getting Edmonton in the in the uh, in the lottery, and I guess my fears were kind of warranted because the team that ended up the lottery was just one spot down from them, the True. Rangers. True. <laughs> um, I mean, if Edmonton had gotten in there, I mean, it's like, do they just trade it away Wait. out of just sheer did, all, like? Did just, you mention just the dishonorable? <laughs> did you say that New Jersey hasn't won the lottery? Sorry, I'm backtracking. I'm from the Twitch chat. Has not. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, New Jersey has gotten it in the past. They've gotten it but, three times in the past couple of years. Right, but we don't associate that with them because, you know, they haven't gotten... I mean, the, the years where they've gotten it, it hasn't been True. a Connor McDavid. It hasn't been it was Nico Heischer and Adam Hall. Larson. Yeah. And, I mean, Adam, Adam Larson was because back way back when, if you won the draft or won the lottery, the most spots you could move up was four. So I think they moved from nine to five. Yeah, exactly. And so... Nico Hoosier is a good player, but, you know, I don't think that anyone's going to look at that and say, yeah, you know, oh my goodness, New Jersey got it again. And, and even the year, even the year where, you know, they, they ended up with the fourth pick for Adam Larson, uh, the top pick that year was Ryan Nugent Hopkins, which is, which is why, you know, this whole thing about tanking and, uh, you know, positioning yourself in the, for the draft. Yeah. So much of it depends on who's just what type of draft it is. And so that's why this year, this was the kind of year to be epically bad. I need to stop saying epically bad. This was the year to be just crap because you can get, <laughs> you know, a generational guy like he's. Yeah. Go. Yeah. All right. So a couple questions that I want to hit on. Then we got one other thing that we want to briefly talk about, but Christian J asked if ducks go to center at ninth, uh, do you think they'll send Henrique to another team for their first in the twenties? Ooh, do you think, I like how do, you think. Do you, I like how you're thinking, my do boy. Do the Ducks getting a center at nine, especially if the Ducks I, believe that player can immediately come onto the team, which doesn't sound likely, but still worth throwing out well, there. Well, he's probably a year or two at yes. most. It depends who they draft. And again, like I'm prefacing everything by saying that I have not studied the draft that hardcore yet. But... Yeah, why not? I mean, I would already trade Henrik without any of those considerations. Um, oh, oh, wait, so, wait, wait, wait. I, mi I misunderstood that. 
uh, their first in twenties, not in the their first in the twenties, but their first in twenty twenty. So looking at New oh. York Islanders. No, I if I were the Ducks, I'm not trading my pick for next year. No, 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 because... I'm trading Henrique. Oh, for next year. So trading. So, okay, so well, we've changed this a couple times. So trading Henrique for the fr- first round pick in 2020. From who? From the Islanders. Okay. Wait, this, why the Islanders? Oh, because they're going to be bad next year. Oh, never mind. Oh. Never mind. I misunderstood. <laughs> Christian J. The, my, my original interpretation was correct. Christian J. was saying trading Henrique for a pick in the 20s. So trading Henrique for a pick in the 20s this if, year. If the Ducks take a center with nine. Yes, I would do it. Um, but I would probably want a little more than just that pick. I would probably want, you know, a prospect along with that. Um, But I think that, yeah, if you draft um, a center at nine, who's probably going to be a decent center, again, I already just think it makes sense cap-wise to move on from Henrique. Um, And I just don't think that where they're heading, he, I just don't see him as a fit. And so, yeah, I I would be totally open to that. Um, Now, if you look at the teams down in the 20s, I mean, we don't know the order yet. Um, but how many of these playoff teams are going to be willing to move a pick to get what a, a two, a, you know, a kind of a second, third mm-hmm. line center? I mean, what's the market for that? That would be my question. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would be open to it, but I think it's kind of a difficult trade to swing because if you look at the teams that are in the playoffs, you know, they're not. <laughs> Let's just say that most of them are not dying for center depth. You know, a team that I could actually see wanting uh, Adam Henrique would be Vegas. Because, <laughs> I, you know, I think he would make their lineup a little more solid. Maybe. But Third line center. Pacific division, in division trade. Yeah. All right. So here's the final thing. So we put together, and it's on our Patreon now, a full playoff preview breaking down every single series ended up being like an hour and a half episode. It was a fun podcast. It was really, really fun going through all of it, but kind of as a brief kind of teaser for that, for you to go check it out. Give me what your favorite series is for this first round. What are you most excited? What will be the most exciting first round series? Ooh, you're asking the tough questions. I know First, uh, the Henrik scenario. Now this, um, I would say the one I'm most excited to watch from the perspective of, oh, my God, I have no clue what's going to happen here. There's a couple, but I think I'm going San Jose, Vegas. I mean, I think that both of those teams, I don't know, maybe I sh- maybe I'm overrating Vegas, but I see them as e- evenly matched. They both kind of have Achilles heels. I just could, I'm, I predicted that series going seven in the in the patreon pod and i'm i'm still sticking to that i think that's gonna be a fun one now a couple of others where i'm excited to see again let me say mine let me say mine now sorry god (laughs) um i'm gonna go with toronto boston yeah i feel like toronto boston is kind of the east version of san jose vegas yeah i think so it's two really good teams although i think the the goaltenders in uh Boston, Toronto are a little bit better, but they've both faltered of late. So who knows? I, I was listening. Lock is better than Martin Jones. I forgot what podcast I was listening to because I've listened to a bunch today with the PDO cast and mm-hmm. uh, Puck Soup and all of them putting out their playoff preview. But someone made the bold prediction that by the end of the series, it's going to be, or basically the Bo- Bruins are going to win game seven of the series with Yaroslav Halak in goal. <laughs> you know, I... I feel like I've underrated Toronto a little bit. Is that weird? I do too, a little bit after. I feel like I've kind of written them off against Boston. Oh, I haven't written them off at all. Well, not written them off, but just like, I, I feel like very, maybe too confident that Boston will win that series. So I'm I don't not, know. I'm not confident at all that Boston's winning that series. <laughs> well, I, I've yeah, said, like, I've said Boston, but I'm not confident about that thing at all. So the series that I am, so outside of Vegas, San Jose, this is kind of a maybe a boring pick for some, but the series I'm very curious to play out is Washington, Carolina. God I, damn it! How did I not say that? Well, I mean, because it's not a sexy pick. Oh, you know, but it, I, I'm on I'm on the Carolina bandwagon, so I got to be on. I that know series. I know you are, but it, it's such an interesting kind of clash between a team that is just masterful in generating shot quality 
and a team that's masterful in generating shot quantity. You know, the Washington Capitals yep. vaunted for their high shooting percentage and their ability to get good looks. And Carolina is just kind of a buzzsaw. And it's going to be interesting to see those two play out. I picked Washington to win that series, but I, it's just, I, I almost, it almost feels wrong for some reason. And you're going to tell me it is wrong. Yeah, it is. Cause Carolina is going to win the series. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this. If Carolina, cause we made our first round predictions, but I made my bracket today and I was thinking about this. If Carolina wins round one, are they going to the Eastern conference final? Yes. <laughs> Man, I, I, I mean, think I think we need to. I think we need to keep our Patreon pod being a preview of each round. I think that's what we'll continue to do for Patreons yeah. for the playoffs. Yeah. So let's end on this note. Let's do our way too early. I guess it's not too early. Final four, and then Cup winner. Fair enough. No, we got we got, we, we got to give the non Patreon listeners a little something. Fine. Fine. Okay. I, I've got St. Louis. I've got San Jose. I've got Tampa. I've got uh, Carolina. Okay. So I have the same as you in the West. I have San Jose and uh, St. Louis. And then in the East, Tampa Bay and Washington. And then who's your cup winner? Tampa Bay. Yeah, I've got Tampa winning it all. I kind of hate. I kind of hate that I'm picking the same as everyone else, but... They're just so think, good. I can't think of a good reason why it wouldn't be them. Yeah. I, I, I guess the one argument you can make is that their round two series is not going to be a cakewalk. I mean, Boston or Toronto, it's going to be difficult. Um, but we'll see. Um, okay. Last, last little thing. Give me, give me your, give me your dark horse to win it all. Uh, dark horse to win it all. To win it all. I'm not talking, you know, win around. I'm not talking this or that. Hoist the cup. Who's your dark horse? Dark horse to win it all. I mean, is Carolina considered a dark horse? I would say that's a dark horse. All right, yeah. let's go with that's, Carolina. That's a, that's a pretty dark horse pick. My dark horse to win it all. Columbus Blue Jackets. St. Louis Blues. Best team since yeah. the turn of the calendar. I don't think I don't feel like the Blues are a dark horse at this point, though. I think that's the issue. That's because why. everyone's picking them over Winnipeg. Well, it's also because they've gone on this historic run. And someone, I, I was talking to someone, uh, Justin, uh, locked down mm-hmm. late night, and he was saying people kind of have forgotten that the Blues were last in the NHL at the uh, draft or at the All Star game. And I'm like, uh, yes, yeah, they w- they were, but, look, but they but almost so won. Good. They almost won the Central. They okay, then I'll give the you Central. another dark horse to win it all. I'm going dark horse Washington repeat. Washington, They're doing that thing Was- again. Wait, no. The the defending cup champion does not I get know. to be considered a dark well, horse. You just, well, you just told me that St. Louis is in a dark horse. If, because if, Carolina, horse if Carolina is a dark horse, the team they're playing can't be a dark horse. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, in hockey, I feel like people don't view the defending champs as the team that should win. It's not like basketball where... Everyone's picking the like. Everyone the def- just assumes the Warriors are going to win the, this year. The defending champ is never the, a dark horse. Oh my! But who's picking Washington to win it? Show me who these people are. But the uh, every, no one people are still predicting. No one's even picking them to, pe- to, to win in round one. People are predicting them though to make the conference <laughs> final. There are plenty of them out there. So if they're oh being my predicted God. by plenty of people, who the hell is a dark horse? Is no one a dark horse? No one's is a dark Winnipeg horse. a dark horse at this point? I mean, Columbus is a dark horse. Columbus is just a underdog. I would call that a dark horse. <laughs> Toronto is a dark horse. Yeah, I would say that that's the one. That's what I should have said. I think if a team is not is not projected by a lot of people to make the conference final, then they're a dark horse. Yeah, I think Toronto. Again, I I feel I'm getting this uncomfortable feeling that I'm overlooking Toronto because Wait, you let, know the, Can I ask you this as a Montreal sure. Canadiens fan? How pissed are you gonna be? when Toronto is the team to break the curse uh, for Canada? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I don't hate the Leafs as much as I hate the Bruins. Really? So I guess that makes yeah. sense. Well, because the, the, the Habs have had way more playoff series against uh, the Bruins. Yeah, I mean, that's the natural rival, but I just yeah. know that the Habs and the Leafs I, don't like each would other I also. Would I be pissed? I mean, I, would be, I guess the team I would want to see break the curse... I don't know. Winnipeg, Calgary. 
Yeah. Vancouver? I, probably one of the Western teams. If it were Ottawa or Toronto, I, w- I just couldn't stand it. Um, but here's the compelling argument for Toronto being a sleeper is that last year, you know, you could against Boston, and this is something that they talked about on the PDO cast, is that you could put Bergeron on Matthews and shut him down. But now they have that extra line with Tavares that I, that just didn't exist last year. Um, and I'm wondering if that's what makes the difference here. All right. So, that trump card. So for more detailed analysis on all these series, go check <laughs> out the Patreon pod that we did. If you're not a patron yet, uh, consider subscribing at $5 a month. You get that episode. And you get all the ones that we did in the past, including trade deadline breakdown. We've done expansion yeah. draft. Uh, it's going to uh, be breakdown. worth following. Yeah, and there's a whole lot there. I believe that there are now... 14 episodes there and so you get and you get all the backlog by doing that you also get access to the discord chat where like the the comment i mentioned from justin at lockdown late night uh he mentioned that in our discord chat and so there's conversations that happen in there that you get access to with being a patron absolutely so that's going to do it for us tonight guys thanks a lot for tuning in we went a lot longer than we expected but that's the nature of us that's typical podcast that's typical it's typical. Uh, thanks a lot for listening in. Um, make sure to check us out on the Apple Podcast app. Leave a rating and a review. Um, we're also on Stitcher and SoundCloud. Check us out on YouTube as well. Just search Anaheim Calling. Make sure to subscribe there. We're also on social media. Jake is on Twitter at ReindeerGames91. I'm on Twitter at Felix underscore Sicard. That is going to do it for us tonight, guys. Thanks a lot for listening. Again, that's patreon.com slash acpod for all the playoff coverage you need. And we will talk to you talk to you at the next bit of Ducks News. Talk then. Bye.